Hello, Slacker friends. Welcome to episode two of this award-winning new panel show uh, called the Slacker Friends Podcast. It was called in Panel Show Magazine, A Triumph of the Human Spirit. Elon Musk tweeted about it last week saying, I wish I had come up with this rad idea. That's the podcast that you're dealing with here, people. If you're watching this on YouTube, then please drop the channel, uh, subscribe, turn the bell on, do all the usual things. And if you're listening on your podcast app, please leave us a review and share the podcast. It's the little free things that you can do that help this uh, machine keep on rolling. Um, speaking of which, thank you to the Slacker Patreon community over at patreon.com forward slash Slacker podcast. Uh, we offer exclusive podcasts over there, music playlists, free tickets to live events when that can start happening in 2029. Um, it's like a little family over there discussing music and all sorts of stuff. Um, so for the price of a cup of tea or coffee, you can take the pressure off the the Slacker CEO and uh, Chimney Sweep here, and you can um, give to what needs given. Patreon.com forward slash Slacker podcast. You guys are legends. Right, Slacker friends, our first guest today. We are Arsenal. We are Arsenal. We are Arsenal. No mercy. No mercy. We're Arsenal. Host of Friday nights on BBC One Extra. He is the one man carnival. He's Daffo never beaten me on FIFA. Ah! <laughs> it is Jeremiah Asamaya. Hello, how you doing? What's good, bro? I love the intro. Thank you for choosing Arsenal. However, right now, probably not the greatest time to be an Arsenal fan, but you know, we live with David De Weeds in defence, so yeah. <laughs> Gen- generally, I genuinely have Sideshow Bob. Like making sure that like people don't score goals. <laughs> oh, guys. mate! I feel like David Luiz is a double agent. Definitely still sports Chelsea and still plays for them because last week and the week before, flipping dreadful. So Jeremiah, but, you know. Jeremiah is big into his football, but like it's his musical brain that we we borrow off him um, tonight. Um, right. uh, our second guest. I, I had so much appropriate music to play, and then I heard this last minute, and I was like, ah, do you know what? I'm just going to play this anyway. <laughs> what? You've done me up, eh? <laughs> I totally forgot about the Titanic flute song, and I was just like, Mike. Juice, label boss of Headache Inc, making music under the name Headache, former Lord of Atlanta singer and all around dreamboat, Mike Juice. Woo! Oh, oh, goes wild. wild. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, How's Mike. How's it going, man? I, I, had to, I had to do it. I had to do it on somebody, and it just happened to be you. Oh, well. I'll take one for the team, for the comedy, <laughs> the value. What's the, what's the crack? How are you doing? Really good. I'm actually a bit worried because um, I'm waiting on a piece of studio gear to arrive and it would just be my luck that the fella would ring the doorbell while I'm doing this. So everyone, fingers crossed. Everybody's got very into like home deliveries now. Nobody actually goes out and gets anything anymore. I mean, you, like, you couldn't for such a long time that people have forgotten like how to actually shop now, I think. I am old school not leaving the house and having zero social interaction. So I, I was, I've been preparing for this for about 16 years, man. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting back into like meeting people and socially distancing and stuff like that this week. It's been a bit weird. What about you, Jeremiah? Yeah, you know, I, I can't because I, I, I look after my grandma sometimes. So I have to be extra cautious. However... I did go to studio yesterday for like the first time and there was like five people there. But I feel like things are starting to get a little bit easier from like, of course, July 4th around the corner. And apparently barbers are meant to open and more pubs and whatnot. So I guess things are starting to ease a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's all right. It feels weird though, isn't it? So. But like the, the, pubs, the pubs won't bother you too much because you don't drink, do you? But like the barbers definitely will because like I've never seen your hair this long in my life. Anybody who's watching on YouTube. Join the club, please. mate. I am I am that person who stands in the corner looking lost right now. That is me. Because this is <laughs> unacceptable. I had a little bash. Un- me and the, me and Nina did the uh the dog clippers. We got them out and I just, just went for it and shaved my head and I thought I was um liberating myself. But actually, <laughs> really, this is now my hair grows out as well, like just the st- oh, no. straight out. There's nothing I can do. This is I've I've had the well wet look out and everything, trying to s- stick it down for this. Oh, Bro, so you're lucky. My hair doesn't grow. 
you you two are, are, are making me jealous. I have like really sort of fine thin hair, and you guys have these like big sort of bushes <laughs> growing. <laughs> like a your real iPad. Yeah, no chance of you boys going bald. Um, right, okay. let's let's start with um our our first question. Yeah. <laughs> Probably one of the worst things to ever happen to hip hop. Vanilla ice. <laughs> what? Ice ice baby. You'll you'll have your minute to, to retort to that. Um, Vanilla Ice is set to play to two thousand five hundred people in Texas to celebrate the fourth of July this weekend in the middle of a pandemic in a state that's numbers have not gone down. And the question I have, what is the stupidest thing you've seen or heard a musician or artist ever do? Who's that to? Take it off, Mike. Go on. I've just, uh, I don't even know if I can say this. The first thing that's popped into my head is a uh, Gigi Allen stage poo. Um, oh my God. Yeah, I know. I've, I've heard about that. Yeah, he, he pooed on stage amongst other horrific things, but yeah, he, he was already naked and, and pooed on stage. But I lowered the tone too early. That's all I'm worried about. No, it's fine. Like I mean, it, it is it is um, fact that uh, Gigi Allen's like a sort of shock shock rock punk uh, singer. Um, yeah, who's a horrendous human being by by all accounts. Definitely, a million percent. And he decided that when he was playing live. Like he would normally punch himself in the face, and he would say all matter of things that are just horrendous. But he, yeah, I remember like one of my friends like telling me that like he did a poo on stage in front of everybody while people were moshing and trying to like shoulder barge into him. Yeah, I mean, I don't know too. I think he did it on multiple occasions, to be fair. And yeah, it's the the shock factor thing. But I mean, did, did, did he clean it? <laughs> I don't. I, I, I don't think. Doubt. This, this I don't think he he pooed and then and then you know cleaned it up with toilet paper. I think it was just yeah a disgusting mess. I can imagine. I mean, GG, it's going to be really tough to beat that one, <laughs> Jeremiah. We've started at the bottom and all we have to do is climb our way back up. Jeremiah, what's the the stupidest thing you've seen or heard a musician or artist do? I mean, you're. you're like, you're out like yeah. one of the DX shows all the time, so you must have seen something. This is it. So when I first started DJing, um, I was booked to play at this artist event. So like loads of unsigned artists will come and one artist came without a DJ. So I was kindly enough to be like, all right, I'll DJ for you. And she was supposed to be the headliner in Vet Commerce. Oh my God. Um, and basically her USB stick was corrupted. So like she spent like 15, 20 minutes, or I did, trying to fix it. And then she went on stage and she literally said to me, I don't know if I can swear, but she said, yeah, oh, the she said, the DJ's fucking up my shit. And I was like, what? And then literally, she was like, oh, everyone blew up the DJ. And everyone started booing at me. And then, obviously, I just walked off. Oh, Bit my annoyed. God. Bro, that, that was got to be the most, yeah, ridiculous thing I've ever experienced in my life. Was... You're going to have to drop the name now, though, surely. <laughs> Never. I can never <laughs> drop the name. I can I'm, never. But I the am. craziest thing is, yeah, how Karma is such a bitch because she turned around to me like, when I got my one extra show, she's like, hey, great to see you doing so well. Can I send you some new, new music? No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like, I was just going to say, like what, what, like, what stage was this? Was this a couple of years ago? Oh, yeah, like 2017, 18. Yeah, because you weren't the Jeremiah SMI like uh, that you are now with your big bad boy one extra show on a Friday night. Like, <laughs> So now she's like coming back going, oh, man. I mean, it's, it's a testament to a, a very well, um, well said line of, you know, be careful to, what is it? Be nice to everybody. Cause you don't know who you'll meet on the way up and the way down. For real. That's still a terrible, terrible way to think though. Surely just don't be a dick for the, you know, for the sake of don't be a dick. Just don't be a no, dick. No, but <laughs> yeah. I, you know when people say that the good guys never make it. Jeremiah, Jeremiah's pl plotting against that. <laughs> Hopefully, but <laughs> you know it's it's crazy sometimes. But I mean, good luck to her. <laughs> Sorry. This is a different a different minute though. Like this is this is the era of good guys finish first. Maybe. Hopefully. Hopefully. Wow. Well, 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I thought, well, Mike, well, you've played played live music for such a long time. What's the dumbest thing you've ever done on stage? Oh, please. I'm not incriminating myself on that. You do it. Like, There's plenty of things. You don't have to incriminate yourself. You can, like, bring us to the edge without, like, getting yourself cancelled or anything. <laughs> when, when, I, uh, when I used to drink, and, like, a lot, um, I used to pick, pick random people out in the crowd. So anyone that had a drink, like, who's got a drink? People put their drinks in the air, and I'd point to one person. I'd get the whole crowd to go, down it, down it, down it. the person that to down their drink. But it got to the point where whenever I went for a sip of a beer, like between songs, the whole crowd would just go, down it, down it, every oh, time no. I ever picked up a drink. So I was necking, and we, were, we used to drink them um, punk IPAs, and they're just so strong, man. They're not... It's like down in a loaf of bread. It was just insane. I was down in like six or eight of them every show. It was awful. Big fat pregnant belly on me as well. You must Did have you throw up? Nah, no, well, probably, yeah. Not on stage. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, you must have gone on stage sober and come off at Wasted, right? Yeah, or gone on, probably gone on Buzz. a little worse. <laughs> yeah, a little worse wear and come off absolutely out of it, yeah. What? Jeremiah, you don't you don't drink, but you're in like you know you're in clubs all the time, and you're well, around, around people who who drink. I well, I say I don't drink. I've only stopped drinking recently, but when I first went to Ibiza and um, I was playing at Disturbing Malta, um, obviously Tiny Timber has that song called "Drinking from the Bottle." Mm. So I was like, I just turned eighteen at the time. I was like, you know what? There's three thousand people here. I've never seen so much people in my life at one venue. Let me just ask Tiny if I can go on stage and drink a whole bottle. Of Belvedere vodka, and it was one of those like large bottles. What? <laughs> Honestly, it was the stupidest but greatest decision I've ever done in my life. Did you do it? The whole bottle? I've done it. I, I've done the whole bottle, and then like half an hour later, obviously, <laughs> just gagging and throwing up everywhere. But it was worth the video. Oh my it was crazy. God. So, Anyone yeah. listening to this who thinks, wow, this is, sounds like a great idea, I'm going to down a bottle of vodka. You don't bother. <laughs> don't, don't bother. Um, you will lose everything. Just before we get to um, our, our our next question, um, I, I need to comment uh, on the backgrounds that you guys have on the Zoom recording that we're doing this on for for the benefit of people watching this on the podcast. In a couple of days, this will be on YouTube, and it looks like Jeremiah is in the middle of Emmerdale Farm. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just enjoyed the background. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're such a. It's so nice. Okay. You're, such, you're such a city boy. Like city boys love the country, and country people love the city. Just like <laughs> this is it. I'd love to live in the country, man. Just no people and just bare chic. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Mine's not actually a background. I'm sat in front of a window right now. Yeah. I mean, unless you're doing the the zoom from the space station mirror, that's a very cosmic looking background that you've got there. Yeah, I'm at the ISS. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's let's well, move on to this. That was a million years ago. Right, blast from the past now. Um, that was a million years ago, a musical story from history. Uh, in 1991, Axl Rose caused an actual riot doing a Guns N' Roses gig after leaping into the crowd to remove a camera from a fan. Over 50 people were injured and 15 people were arrested. What was... Hold on. Yeah. Oh, I've screwed this up. <laughs> I've written the same question in twice, have I? Have you? It's the stupid thing you've heard or seen a musician do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's the question one and question two that I sent. They're very similar. Well, I've, got, I've got different answers. Like, yeah, same. Okay, right, right, right. Okay. I'll, I'll just I'll do that again. I didn't even notice until there now. Right, let's go again. That was a million years ago. Right, time for a blast from the past now. A story from music uh, in history. In 1991, Axl Rose caused a riot during a Guns N' Roses gig after leaping into the crowd to remove a camera from a fan. Over 50 people were injured and 15 arrested. What is the stupidest thing you've seen or heard? someone doing at a live show kind of similar to the last one this is more opening it up to the whole room rather than just artists and musicians uh jeremiah you go first slow tie amazing artist oh. but i saw this video like trending on <laughs> mike is just laughing already 
I don't know which one I'm going to say, but I think I'm going to go for the more decent one. Um, I saw a video of him spitting it in a girl's mouth. I saw it and I was like, what is going on? Like, I can't imagine getting to a stage in my career, right? And a fan loves me so much, so she's like, she opens her mouth and she tells me to spit in her mouth with just pure phlegm. Like, come on, man, you can do better than that. But at the same time, she might thought it was sexy. He might have thought it was sexy, and you never know. You do, though. You do know. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, I mean, like, it's just, even if it is, it just, it, it challenges so many social norms that it's kind of hard to accept. I've never right? seen I've never seen something that sick at a at a show before. I do you know what I'm saying? It is a bit of an abuse of power. Do you know what I mean? Because he doesn't know really. That person might be caught up in the moment and not want that at all. You know, he could have tuberculosis and not know about it. Yeah, maybe he's the, maybe he's the new Gigi Allen. Oh my god! Hopefully not. Oh um, if if that was to happen. Post COVID, he would probably get the twenty year sentence. Oh mate, imagine you know I mean? doing that post COVID nineteen. Oh no, oh, I feel, I feel, I feel dirty. Even just the thought of it's making, yeah. making me feel sick. Moving us on to our our next one. I'm not afraid to fail. I'm not afraid to fall over, make a mistake. That oftentimes cripples people on the onset of getting to into anything. Idris Elba giving us motivational, uh, like, like juice, motivational juice over some sad piano music. I mean, what else do you need? Um, so the Southwest London rapper Shay Lingo has signed with Idris Elba's record label, Savin Wallace. Which actor has made the switch from film to TV that you would like to talk about? Now, no, note that I just said, which actor has made the switch that has been good <laughs> or which has been bad. I just decided to like leave it open because I always feel that if you go from acting to music, it's very rare that you're ever any good. But if you go from music to acting, it's a different scenario. I don't know. I want to see what, how you guys play it out. Mike, starting with you. Um, again, the first thing that's popped into my head here is <laughs> Zan and Deck. <laughs> um, famous PJ and Duncan, but you know what? I love Ant and Deck, and it, they obviously started out on Biker Grove, then went and did. I'm not even quite sure what genre you would call it. The music, I guess they were trying to be like hip hop, I suppose, <laughs> uh, crazy. But then you know, then they returned to where they belong, and they're the, one of the nation's favourites, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, I, that is a good answer because, like, I think unless you're over, like, I mean, Jeremiah, like, how old are you? Like, you're, like... See, this is it. I'm 22. So, yeah, yeah, so, like, you won't remember Ant and Deck as, as musicians. I say musicians. No. As, as, like, musical performers. But I think it, it was probably around, like, the popularity of, like, Fresh Prince and, and Will Smith. And yeah. I think, I think, like, the UK music industry wanted to make their own... Will uh, Will Smith and they decided, hey, why have two one white guys? We have two guys from Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you they... mentioned Will Smith, though. Why? Because that's what I chose. Because I couldn't figure it out. Hold hold the phone on that one, but I mean that's that that's a that's a really decent one as well. Oh, um, actually, going through Ant and Dex's back catalogue, right? Which is how many tracks? I mean, I want to go on Spotify now. Let us know. But let's get ready to rumble. Let's not beat around the bush here. It's a Stonewall banger. Oh, it's not. I knew you were going to say that. Is it? Is it just nostalgic? Oh, let, 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 me, let me blast a little bit of it in. We might get the whole thing pulled because of this. I'll be thinking that thing makes it. Let's get ready to rumble. Yeah, I mean that's that's. Wait, a... is that Ant and Deck? Yeah, it's like that this new Jack Swing kind of thing they tried to do. Oh my days! I never knew that. Do you know that? Do you know the song? Yeah, I've heard the song plenty of times. It's Friday as we record this, Jeremiah. I dare you. I dare you. I double dare you. I'll I'll give you a ten. Yeah, my radio. If you play Ant and Deck 
you just get ready to rumble on one extra at like half week. seven Deal. on Friday night. <laughs> Next week. Deal. Um, I'm going through their, their catalog. 2012, they dropped the Greatest Hits, which has 12 tracks on it. Is it is it the one song twelve times? <laughs> yeah, it's like the radio mix, the <laughs> yeah. Japanese B side mix, the the slow down mix. No, they've got like um tracks called Our Radio Rocks, Stepping Stone, Better Watch Out, Eternal Love, Stuck on You, Shout, Perfect, I'll give you if if I give you my number. And there's one called You Crazy Cats with Crazy and Cats with a K. Will we play a bit of it to hear what it sounds like? Yeah. You crazy cats. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like the Happy Mondays. It sounds good. It sounds like that, that Wild Wild West tune that Will Smith did for <laughs> the movie. It sounded a bit like that. Well, let me see. Get ready. Get steady. I mean, I, I'd like to say I was going to go after this and listen to Ant Deck all day, but like, this is not a fucking my mission as I have been. Um, Jeremiah, like, We've we've got your answer already, but like talk talk me through why why you picked um, Will Smith. I tell you why, because that's the only person I could think of that's actually went from being on TV slash in movies to being a musician. Because you know, we was doing, going through that phase of where like Fresh Prince of Bel Air and like Summertime in that era, and I was like, oh, that's the only person I could think of. But I guess Will Smith is one of those people. Like he's he's always been good at acting. But he was surprisingly good at music. But I feel like as he's grown older, like he hasn't really stayed on top of the music. He just stayed to acting. But I guess he's one of those people that you just can't ignore. Like, even if he makes bad music, it's Will Smith, so you almost have to love it. Yeah, I know what you mean. But like, can he have can he have a musical comeback? Like, can a man in his early fifties come back to hip hop and drop an album and it be taken seriously? Will Smith can, especially with what's going on right now with him and his missus. Surely you've seen that, right? I've I've heard something. You tell you fill me in. So from what I know is that um, Jada, uh, who is his wife, has an open relationship with August Aslina, something like that, the American R and B singer. I'm sticking. And apparently, with, I'm sticking the word ale- allegedly in here just for legal reasons. Yeah, but- please. Oh my <laughs> days! Yeah, please. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that's what that's what been going around the internet, and then. Jada says she's going to take herself to the red table. So she might interview herself. But yeah, so like, if Will Smith came out with a flipping... What does that, what does that mean? Um, bring, bring herself to the red table? What's that mean? So she has that platform where she like interviews people about their life. Oh. So she's bringing herself. So she so, interview herself? Didn't Alan Partridge do that? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. So, wait, only God knows how that's going to go. But if Will Smith said tomorrow, I'm going to do an R&B album talking about his wife and his whole love life, I reckon it would be a number one. Just saying. Well, like, I mean, did you listen to, like, much Will Smith, Mike? Because, like, when I was at uni, we used to stick Will Smith on all the time, but it was kind of, like, a little bit ironically because some of the boys that I was friends with were into, like, old-school hip-hop, so they would stick on, like, Willennium, and we'd listen to it, like, start to finish. Big Willie style is... I had it on (laughs) CD, man, and I wore it out as well. Um, I I'd always love Fresh Prince. I just I love Will Smith is like that that guy at school who's like good looking, smart, like gets good grades. Is on all of the teams on the football team. Like he's just that guy, and he's good at everything. So like I know you love you love you love to see him do well, but you also hate him because he's just got everything down. You know what I mean? He, he really does. Yeah, and his his kids are pretty cool as well. And yeah, he he also like has written one of my favorite lines in in hip hop. But like, not really my favorite line. But like, he he wrote the line. Some people call me soft, more like Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> right here we go. Next one. Feel free to sing along. I see This is a cover from I think I think he's from Switzerland. The place is where we go when we're free and old. 
my wife's going to be like, oh, what are you doing in that wee cabin of yours? You're singing Robbie Williams at 10 to 12 on a Friday <laughs> afternoon. Um, Robbie Williams this week claims that he and his wife, uh, Ada Field, were threatened with uh, being beheaded while doing charity work in, in Heidi. I, see, I saw that as a, as a news story during the week. Um, and my very tenuous question to that is, which member of a boy band has gone on to great success and you're not allowed to say Justin Timberlake? Um, Jeremiah? Yeah, I, I struggled with this one as well, but um, I guess Sway Lee from Ration Road. Um, That's a I couldn't, I couldn't think of the other guy. No, it sounds so rude, but it's so weird because when you think of like records like um, Unforgettable, and you've done so many things that just solo projects that you just don't think of the other member of Ray Shimmer. And I feel like the other member was more like rappy, but sometimes vocals in terms of singing, and especially in terms of the hip hop and rap scene, just go a lot further when you can do both as well. So yeah, he smashed it. It's impossible for yeah. there to be a boy band or a girl group, um, like a pop group really, and there not be dominant members in it. Like even, if I think now, right, of Destiny Child, I can think of Beyonce and Kelly, and I can't think of the third. Michelle. Really? Yeah, Michelle. Can't think of Michelle. Yeah, but it did. Like, on, like, now that you say it, like, I'm right, okay, Michelle. But, like, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's the dominant ones in, in, in pop groups, and then there's just yeah. those pop groups that, that fade away, like, pretty much all of the late 90s ones. Brings us on nicely to this. Who? is the hero of the week for for you guys um jeremiah starting with you who's your hero of the week simple stormzy man like that man that individual like he's done so much for me just as a, a young black person and he's just done so much for like the like young black people like entrepreneurs recently he, he said that he's done like donate or invest 10 million pounds over the next 10 years into like like young black people's lives like doing stuff like that is, is one inspiration. And like the sort of things that he's just been able to amount to in the last like four or five years. I remember like just seeing him at Represent Radio when like he first started and he dropped one song called Not That Deep. And he was, he was very humble, but like since then, like, you know, so many number ones and like head down in Glastonbury with a flipping Banksy bulletproof vest on. Yet when you still meet the person, he's as humble as when he first started. And for me, that's just like, Come on, so is yeah. it like as someone so so someone your age is it important to have somebody like Stormzy in the mainstream representing your voice? Hundred percent, because for for a lot for a lot of young people like me, like I don't really listen to drill music, but obviously it's like it's it's popular, it's in fashion with like young black culture. But sometimes drill music doesn't connect with me because a lot of the times it's talking about like violent stuff and I'm always been a person I'm just I'm just a sweet boy at heart and Stormzy manages to find a way of like being gangster being sweet but also being very faithful and godly and for me it's like well it's a bit of everyone's pie so like it's definitely important to have someone like Stormzy who you know can just impact everybody no matter what colour or what race you are I think you see that a lot with, with any artist that comes up from a working class background that they're more likely to give stuff back when they, when they get to the top because they kind of remember what it was like to have very little. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, you know, because I, like a, a I feel like a lot of the rappers that we have today, like everyone is financially, that everyone that does well, surely that, like you're financially stable and like some of them haven't, been vocal enough to give back like SL he's a rapper from South London he's never had a UK number one but he's pledged a hundred grand to support young people and he's like you've got all these other bigger rappers who are in the UK who definitely have more money than SL I assume because you know they've got more hits than him yet they haven't mentioned to give back at all and of course they're not obliged to give back but you know morally it's always good to feed back into the environment that made you who you are today there's other Sorry. ways. Makes you look good as well, doesn't it? Is that, is that At old? the same time, it does. 100%. I'm so cynical, man. I, I always feel like it's like 50-50, you know what I mean? Like when you have, yeah. like, oh, I'm not naming names, but like famous pop singers going to like see terminally ill children to get the photo of them, their thumbs up, but look what a nice person I am. I always wonder. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? My mum always, always taught me that, Jerry, like if you ever do something like give a homeless person clothes, never post it online yeah. because like, 
that's not your blessing. Your blessing is just doing it from your heart. So yeah. I, I get that aspect as well. So it's a tricky one because you never know. They could be doing it behind closed doors. Yeah, like all that, all that George Michael stuff that only came out after he died. Like he was donating left, right and centre and paying for stuff. I feel like he did it like in a really good way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He, he didn't like, make a, the master song and the dancing about it. He did it for for the right reasons. But like that, Stormzy um, is the sa- like this is episode two, and he's been two people out of the four people that we've had on Hero of the Week. So Stormzy's obviously doing something right. Mm-hmm. He is. Mike, who's your hero? Um, for some reason, I didn't. Didn't pick anyone, but I'm gonna off, off the. Top of I'm my, my own hero. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go for uh, Rashford, man. Officer Rashford. Yeah. Big time. Is it is in it a shame when like Premier League footballers have to like fund the government always? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a it's a weird time. I mean, yeah. like like footballers get paid more than even the most successful musicians do, and true. Having like somebody like Marcus Rashford, but they, I mean, he could he backs up the, the point I was making earlier on about somebody coming from very little and g- giving back to the community that he was in because he knows that like kids need to eat. I mean, this is such a basic uh human right that I it's amazing that he even has to tweet about it or approach government about feeding children in the morning. I mean, what government will like you know not do that? In the first we, place, we're like we, sh- we shouldn't be in a place as a culture or a society that he this this conversation even has to happen. But for Marcus Rashford to go and do it, and for a footballer to make a difference like that, you don't see it happen off, do you? Really? Are we yeah. make people aware as well. I feel like you know, there's 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 loads of like middle class people that that would never have like that wouldn't have even popped into their heads because they're not in that situation. They wouldn't have even known it was a thing. But I feel like now because he's done that, like you know, people are aware. Mm. Do you do you, um, I might be playing dumb here, but do you do you honestly feel like people who are middle class genuinely don't know that's going on? <clears throat> I have like, conversations with I've got loads of friends, man, who like when I talk about stuff like you know they're just they're not even it's it's stuff that doesn't even there's been loads mind. of stuff like with this with this BLM stuff, man. There's been loads of stuff where I've seen my friends posting things out, and I've been like, you, you didn't know that. Like, that's crazy that you're finding that out now. So I yeah. suppose that like things like that, uh, bringing bringing you know stuff to the attention, you you would be amazed at the stuff people don't know. Mad. I think anyway. Yeah. Big Mad. time. Good to hear. So Marcus Rashford, Stormzy, our heroes of the week, and it brings us on to. Oh my God! You're a piece of garbage. A real shitty piece of garbage. Uh... Our villain of the week. Who are we gonna get for this, <laughs> Jeremiah? Oh, why me first? <laughs> you know what? Yeah, right. It might just still in there. I, I don't have one. However, if I was actually thinking of someone that might had had some scrutiny this week or the last month, then there's two people. Uh, one is Virgil Abloh. I think he's a great designer. I wear stuff all the time. But you saw um. um he was designing the Pop Smoke album cover and he got so much backlash from everybody because it basically looked like uh, an artwork someone done on like paint or like word, yeah, word pad or something like that. But, you know, most important thing, Pop Smoke's music, music was great. This is me trying to be diplomatic, but also real Virgil, but, you know. Yeah, but I like, I mean, there's, there's two sides to it. Like, you, like, like this, this fella has like passed away, and and anything to, like to do with his art should be really kindly considered, considering that it probably will be the last um, release of new music or original music that'll ever happen. Like, I mean, sure. a good example of getting that right was Mac Miller and releasing Mac, the stuff that Mac Miller had um, uh, last year. Uh, but but then, in sort of not not to defend Virgil, but like just to sort of play devil's advocate, really, is. There's certain, I mean, Michael Talley, is the, like, he's well into design, much more so than me. But that's an aesthetic as well. Like, I mean, maybe that's the aesthetic that he was going for. You know, it's, maybe it's not like he just turned up and was like, right, 15 minutes on paint, and there we go. Yeah. I, I always wonder with stuff like that, man, after the artist has died. Like, because I, I always think myself, if it was me, like, 
oh, I, well, it would just torment me dying and not having like some some tunes out, you know, that that I, that I want to get out. But then also I'd want to be there for like the way, you know, for the artwork and the way like music was released and stuff. I always wonder like how I would feel about it or how they come up with, you know, do they say before they die, you know, or is it just a label trying to cash in on a death? Like I always, I never really know what the situation is with that stuff. What do you reckon? I, I think like, as you said, I think the the thing is like it, it would it would be hateful for for you specifically if there was music sitting in the in the vault and that that, that couldn't come out. I mean, like I think Prince has albums and albums and albums of stuff that that's come out. It it can be very like it can get very murky and messy in considerations of people's estate. So it's really whoever is in control of the music is is key to what what happens next but like if if somebody passed away and you you would obviously get their pe- people together to go how would they have liked this and you kind of would have tried to play it out as if with close friends and close family how they would have liked it i'll be haunting people man <laughs> oh great <okay. laughs> do you believe in ghosts ghosts you believe in them because you said you were haunting people yeah, no, I don't really know. It was more of a joke. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Sorry. Is it you, Jeremiah? <laughs> no, no way. I'd, me believing guys, I'd be shitting myself every day. <laughs> um, Use so the ghost as a toilet paper. Our, our villain, villain of the week, uh, Virgil, and uh, moving on to Mike, who is your piece of garbage? A real shitty piece of garbage. Uh... Way to lower my self esteem, man. There's not much of it there. <laughs> um, Mine's a lazy one, I think, but I just hate him so much. It's Donald Trump just is my hope, my most hated person on the I mean, planet, I think. He just epitomizes everything that is wrong in the world. He's he's my villain of a lifetime, I think. Is there anything like particular that he's done recently, or is it just the fact that he's just never I just hate never him ending? like I need to vocalize that and anytime I'm on anything. If you if we'd have to have a whole separate podcast as to stuff that that guy's done that I dislike. But yeah. Is that me that's pinging as well? Can you hear that? <laughs> that's that's probably you, Donald Trump's lawyers. They're probably like, <laughs> going, we know where you live. We're gonna no, get oh, you. Is my manager, you're banned from touring America. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um okay, I mean that's that that's a pretty simple one. I mean like there's not even any point talking about Donald Trump's many foibles because that's that's not even a podcast. That's a whole series. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> series five to series ten of how much a douchebag Donald Trump is. Um, okay, right. We're moving us on to you were in the parking lot earlier. That's how I know. <laughs> we're, we're looking to find out those those uh, weird and crazy moments that you you bump into either idols of yours people that you're familiar with in music or movies um i just love hearing hearing stories um and my friend ryan sent me this in about a, a time he met a quite quite a big female singer in in belfast so years ago i used to work for a club in belfast and the size of the place kind of made bumping into a uh, famous musicians pretty easy. So you just sort of had to ignore them and get on with whatever it was you were doing. Uh, so I remember once being upstairs above the club stage and needing to get back downstairs. So as I round this corner, I can see PJ Harvey in the elevator ahead of me. She noticed me and kindly reached over to use the whole door button. So I start picking up the pace a little and by the time I've got within about 10 feet, she just lets them close in my face and gave me the finger. So. Huge respect for a power play like that. She never met me before in her life. <laughs> and uh, I've experienced a lot of weird stuff uh, during my time there. And sometimes the lines blur. So PJ Harvey, if you're listening and this wasn't you, you need to let me know because you've been getting the blame for this for the best part of 10 years. <laughs> there you go. P- PJ wow. Harvey giving the middle finger to one of the staff at the at the limelight. That was Ryan McCormick legend in the game. <laughs> um I want to know about the sort of encounters that maybe you guys have had as well. By the way, if anybody listening to this wants to send in a voice note of their encounter, send, send it to slacker.ptag at gmail.com and I will play it if it's good and funny. Um, Mike, you've bound to have bumped into so many people on the you, circuit. You, are, you, you've, you, are you saying this for any particular reason? There's a, 
I'm not like, but the, the, I love how this is making you feel really uncomfortable. Uh, I've, I've only just sort of just lived it down. Like it was, it was like the first thing when you Googled my name, it was the first thing that came up a BBC about article internet. about why I'm so embarrassed to potentially meet Dave Grohl again. Um, no, what happened? I, I, I missed this. It's such a, such a crazy story, man. I don't, I'll, I'll try and condense it. Um, so uh, I was on tour in Australia and uh, it was a day off we had like a couple of days off maybe and we were in um i think it's called jimmy's pizza i don't know if anyone is australian on here to fact check me but um it's like a it's like a club that's also a pizza joint and it's in this basement in sydney and um but anyway uh i was outside having a cigarette and then um a guy got out of a cab and i was like well, easy dave Grohl," and it was actually dave Grohl. <laughs> and, uh, so he got out and I, I was chatting to him for a good solid like five minutes, just telling him that I lo- it was, oh, I can't even imagine what I was saying. Just telling him I loved him, I assume. Telling him my, my favorite songs and like he's the reason I was in the band, all this stuff. And he kept looking down and I was like, what's he looking at? And I looked down and I was had hold of his arm with both of my hands and I didn't even realize <laughs> the whole five minutes I was talking to him. I was, I was like holding on to him and he went, dude, get off of me. And it was just awful. But anyway, it gets worse. Right. So that whole night, like he, he was there, like Chris Shifflett was there, Pat Smear, like the whole band were there. And um, my manager and the rest of my band, knowing that I'm like a massive fan, kept going over to Dave, going, you've got to meet Mike. He's a massive fan. You've got to meet him. And uh, every time I turned around, it seemed Dave Grohl was there with someone trying to, it looked like I'd gone around everyone and said, please get him to speak to me, please, please. God. Anyway, uh, my manager at the time, same thing, you know, I turned around, Dave Grohl was there. And then Jamie was like, here he is now, here he is. And he goes, oh, I know you, you're the weirdo from outside. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. That's not fair. I know. <laughs> oh, I think about it all the time. That's not fair. That's your hero when he's called you a weirdo. Man, I was a weirdo, trust me. Like, But, I mean, when you meet your hero, it's really hard for you to be yourself. Like, it's hard for you to sort of dust it down and just go, right, play it cool, here we go. That's the only time I've been massively starstruck like that. I, just, I didn't know what to do. I, did, I, did, <laughs> I just needed to talk to him. Yeah. How, how, how was it left? Like, I mean, because obviously you played it out in your head about, like, Jan- like, talking with him and then he's like going well actually we need another guitarist on yeah mate that's, <laughs> that's literally what you, you come and join us reason. yeah oh yeah cool man yeah i think i've heard of you maybe we should write, write an album together. yeah yeah <laughs> totally i mean i used to have that when i was a kid like uh, of going oh yeah I'd, I'd be in the crowd at old trafford and then they'd be like oh we need a player and then i'd be in the shirt and they'd be like let's get that 11 year old boy and stick yeah. him on the pitch right now oh Oh, yeah. Mike, I'm, I'm, I'm scarlet red for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm worried if you've got like a filter or something you can put on on this. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get some sort of like Instagram filter and I'll put it over your face. Amazing. So, um, J- Jeremiah, you, you're not going to beat that, are you? Like, I, I heavily doubt it. Um, when I first started the BBC, right, it was on the residency, so I had a show once a month. And it was my first ever show. When you started yeah. at BBC, I remember this, right? Because you had a show once a month, yet you were in six days a week. Um, six and, days a week. And, and you were like, you, yeah, you were in like eight hours every day for six hours, six days a week. And I remember like turning to my producer, I was like, that kid's going to end up with a, a proper show and one extra. Like, and he fucking did. So fair play. I'm very proud of you. Trust me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, first residency show, right? Um, I had Ray on, who's an amazing singer. She like, works with everyone. Um, and then she had a song with uh, Mr. Easy called Decline. And it was like doing promo for her. So I was like, cool. And so she came on a show, right? And then like, I looked at her and I was like, whoa, like, she's beautiful, right? <laughs> and being the rookie that I was, because it's like my first, e- by the way, BBC is my first ever job. So I've never had a job before until I've came to BBC. So like we were on air and I was like flirting with her as a joke on radio. And then she was like, and I was like, well, look, we're the same age, we're both Ghanaian, you know, like maybe. And then she was like, yeah, like we can go to the park for a, pic- for a picnic or something. And obviously she said that as a joke, but me being young, I'm thinking, oh my days, I'm going to be in with Ray and I'm going to have like a famous girlfriend. And then I actually tried to slide in her DM and like tried to speak to her. And then I can't remember, but I think she said, My G, my G. And then I was like, Oh, flipping it. Then Charlie Bluff gets worse. 
brought me on the eighth when he was at BBC, and he's like to Ray's like, oh, you know, we have someone in. He didn't tell me this. He's like, we have someone that's a new presenter. He's a great DJ. He's amazing, and he's a bit of a stalker of you. He has like pictures of you up on his wall, and I couldn't really like back out of this because I'm just behind her in it. So I was like, for flip's sake. That's oh man, Charlie played you played you bad there. But so bad. When, when, no, you, no. when you uh, when you were in her DMs and she says my G my G is that friend is that like that that's friend zoned right? That's that bro. That's more than friends and that's like that's like flag brothers. <laughs> that's oh, like God. I'll keep that's that like social distancing. <laughs> my G. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for me to know that now because like I, I, I just, just in case I need a friend zone some people maybe I'll go into my wife or later on I'll be like my G <laughs> my G <laughs> um, wow okay I mean they're both incredible stories uh, I, I'm <laughs> yeah I'm really embarrassed for the for the lot of you um, right we've got we've got one one final bit and it's kind of like what really what we should be doing um is putting a little bit of uh, sort of musical love back out into the world. I fucking love this band. They are the best band ever, period. All right, so I haven't interjected too much. I'm kind of just playing the host, but uh, I, I want to make a suggestion this week. It's a South Korean producer, uh, and it's her second EP, and she's called Park Hai Jin, and it's very wavy. And her first EP was all house music and uh, quite gospely. And this one isn't at all. Uh, and it's wicked. And I'll put a link to it below uh, on the podcast and on uh, the YouTube as well. Uh, Mike, who, who would you who would you uh, tell us to go and listen to? Oh, Apart from no. yourself, who, of course. Before we even get to this, who has um, an EP dropping next Friday? I do. Yeah. It's called uh, Food for Thought. Shameless plug. Go and uh, check it out if you like. It's kind of like lo-fi hip-hop, but I don't know, uh, like a gimpy white guy version, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't know what it is. It's quite weird. It's just all my influences sort of regurgitated. I'll check Happy days. So, so like that's it. a full, that EP, full EP from Headache coming out yeah, on man. Friday for you all to check out. Anyway, you've embarrassed me now. Um... I would like everyone to check out uh, my mate Geo. It kind of makes, um, I don't even know what, what kind of music you would, uh, you know what, I'm not even going to, I want the, the mystery to, uh, to overcome you and you just have to go and check it out. I'm, I'm going to uh, give you a link, I think, if that's all right. Phil, yeah, yeah. Um, it's hard to find. When you type Geo in, because it's just three letters, like loads of famous people come up, like George, et cetera, on Spotify. So it's hard to find. Uh-huh. So um, yeah, it's, 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 it's really, really good. Like insanely good. Wicked Wildfire, fire me that link and I'll, I will let everybody else uh, follow it after they're finished watching this. Um, okay. Jeremiah, you're, you're like a, a harbinger of new music. Like you go out and you, yeah. it and you, you drop it. And I'm sure you've got about 100 you can give to us, but give us one. Yeah, um, bit of a shameless plug, but my little brother is flipping amazing. Like I kid you not. Yeah. He's been learning how to play like piano calls and he's just been making really great music. He's been working with H's team as well recently. Mm. And I'm just like, bro, where do you learn how to make so much great music? So like, yeah, like, I say, his his producer name is Seventeen X, and like, hey, yeah, pretty good, man. He does like house music. He does like, even does um like soundscapes for movies as well. Like, he does the whole shebang, and he's actually very good at it. Like, wow. So yeah, I will uh, like Mike done put the link in it. So hopefully, have you played Have you played him on the radio yet? Can't do that. <laughs> Got to stand that interest. long. I was going to say, of interest form. you have to go fill out that conflict of interest form. Oh, mate, three, four pages long just to say he's my brother. <laughs> I'll leave it. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you do that, Phil, for me. <laughs> um, well, there you go. There's, there's three recommendations um, for you guys to go, go and listen to um, and enjoy. And the final part of our, our podcast is, is showing a lot of love um to um the patreon to help the the podcast um uh train keep rolling um where we do a thing called the portrait of a patreon i really need to like get a piece of music for this i've got sound effects for everything else but this this is portrait of a patreon and it is i probably would pronounce the name wrong um as i do all the time jeremiah you get this right like uh, when you're on radio and you pronounce names wrong i do it i do it probably weekly my name is hard enough mm-hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> Remembering your own name. <laughs> I, I yeah. I, what what do people call you, Mike? Me or oh, mate? You don't want to know. Mike Ducky. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, Mike. Yeah, oh, I get a million things. Yeah, just just headache now, straight up. <laughs> yeah. Just, Easy just to remember. Go straight for headache, Jeremiah. I stick the I in your name all over the place. It changes for every time I spell it. I've I've noticed this week. <laughs> yeah. Asian ma, Ashama, Asian man, piss off. <laughs> Asiyama. Asiyama. But yeah. you know what? Got I'll it. deal with that one. It's all good. I can't be asked no more. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the, our portrait of a patron is Jiren Shoop. Um, and I've definitely got that wrong. Her all time favorite record is David Bowie's Hunky Dory. Favorite band is the 1975. Yes! Uh, big, big fan, Jeremiah. Well, I love you when you're out Cause I love the sound of the sound of your heart A lot of their songs sound like Like 1980s power ballads. Hey, don't, like, don't, don't slander I'm, I, I'm not slandering I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's a good thing I mean, a lot of them sound like Phil Collins and NXS And like all the sort of stuff that, Yeah, that's like, great Yeah, so well, good. I'm not saying it's a bad thing oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Best release of the year is The Birthday Party by the 1975 Um <laughs> Worst band is Imagine Dragons by just saying I'm, Whoa, what? I'm not a fan. I just can't. I just can't. So you're telling me Radioactive is not a great song. Radioactive. Oh yeah. Do you know what? I'm kind of with oh. them. Like, I, I don't I don't dislike them. I don't really like them. It's just I don't even know any of their songs. I don't listen to the radio, so I'm not <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna tell me Mike's gonna tell me you don't like Bastille as well, aren't you? Matt, like, right. I, d- I don't. I, d- I, actually, I, I have nothing, nothing, nothing against, like, the dude or the music or anything like that. It's just not for me. But you know what? I would love to see a cross-section of Bastille fans just to see what kind of people they are. Because, you know, normally you kind of know what, like, an artist fan's like. Yeah. yeah. What are Bastille fans? I'd love to see, like, just 20 of them. And see I think ba- Bastille like. fans, <clears throat> you could probably, like, I think they're one of those rare bands that, like write down all your social demographics and pick one from each and they'll they'll probably have one from each of them. Do you right. know what I mean? I imagine they'd be like painting Warhammer and drinking Monster Energy. <laughs> I might have got it completely wrong. It's the burn. Then you get me. The burn is deep. <laughs> um, the most cringe musical experience for our portrait of a patron, um, Jiren, is I forgot the lyrics to the second verse of a song I covered at my second open mic and got heckled in a coffee shop. The MC made me take a couple of minutes to regain composure and finish the song. I think of that every time I go into that coffee shop. I mean, that's putting yourself through torture, isn't it? Like, I think I've I've been in that situation where I forgot lyrics because I'm like I, I've written some songs and I can play a couple of songs and if I get drunk enough at a house party, I'll 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 play it. But I forget the lyrics every single time, and I don't get embarrassed. I just laugh it off because I'm shy. I've got a trick, <laughs> I've got a trick for it. The, if you ever forget lyrics to your own song, you just back away from the mic, and I call it goldfish, and you just do like you know your mouth like that, and then it looks like you're trying to get the crowd to sing along. Or uh, what you can even do is if they're close enough, you can pick someone out in the front row and go, oh yeah, like they're mouthing the lyrics, and you can just pick them back up again and carry on. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good technique, Jaron. There you go. If you want to be a portrait of a patron, then uh, or a, yeah, a portrait of a patron, all you have to do is go over to patreon.com forward slash slacker podcast and become a patron of the podcast for all the price of a cup of tea a month. Um, Jeremiah, just before we finish, what do you do if you mess up DJing? Because like I, I, I mean, I've got various different techniques because I have messed up numerous times. Although you're, a, I've watched videos of you, DJ. You're a lot more skillful than I am. Try to be. Um, when you say mess up, elaborate, as in like clanging, so two I, songs sound out of sync, you got or two, like you speak gone. Eat, like any reason of like messing up, like I mean, you could like uh, be pulled out of one of the sides of like the, the decks, um, you might have like accidentally hit the crossfader over and the music's gone, like <clears throat> how do you style it out? I get on the mic. If if I as soon as I fucked up, I get straight on the mic and I just start talking to the crowd like nothing's happened. It's I'm the so radio sorry. in you, isn't it? It's the radio in you, literally. <laughs> like if my USB corrupts, I have to do two things. I have a blame it on the sound engine. And I'm like, oh, because everyone goes, oh, and I'm like, sound man, what's going on then? As he's talking, like, come on, like, and I'm talking my USB back in, yeah. I'm like, hold on, like, I reset the crowd. I'm like, right, the energy's not right in there. We need to take it up to another level. So I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> However, saying that, my guiltiest thing I've ever done in the rave, yeah, 
is that I've accidentally stepped on the wire and the whole socket of the DJ text went off. Ooh. That was long. But anyway, that's the, one of I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna pull you out of one there and just say that that's the that's the venue's fault for having the power socket somewhere that a DJ could stand on it. Maybe even sue him. Yeah, exactly. Let's get let's get some sweet sweet um Legal sweet suing money. <laughs> <laughs> Might be, like what? How do you like uh? What if what what's the sort of vibe when when you played in the band? Like when somebody used to mess up? Because when I played in a band, you'd come off after a show, and I clearly would have fucked up, and everybody would be looking at me, and it really wasn't a, a nice experience. <sighs> We were pretty good at styling it out. I think that was a bit of our, like, Steve's was, was kind of like, you know, not really caring too much. But the, the worst time we ever messed up was at my friend Steve's wedding. Shout out, Steve Sears. Um, and everyone, like, everyone's quite musical in the friendship group. So he made bands that have, like, just pulled random five people. Like, hey, you're the drama, you're the bass player. And my band was our own band for the wedding. We had to learn a bunch of songs. But we were on tour until the day before. So um, that day we sort of bashed through and we're like, yeah, we'll be fine. Got there to the wedding that all the other people have been rehearsing for like weeks. I mean like weeks and had it all down like a proper set. And I forgot the lyrics to the boys are back in town. Second verse it was quite awful. I couldn't even style it out. Everyone was like, mate, isn't this your job? Like, what are you doing? I was like, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty brutal, man. I'm not going to lie. Clip, oh mate, God. at a wedding as well. In it, yeah. I, I was stone cold sober and it was just all the, everyone was wasted and heckling me. It was like, like something out of a nightmare. Oh God! It was alright though. Got away oh with it. God. <laughs> yeah, I played all that fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, just come along. Um, guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your Friday to look back on the the week in music and coming on and being my slacker friends. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers, Robin.